Okay, we're going to use this very simple product sketch in order to illustrate uh, an important attribute uh, in terms of our basic sketching skills for design presentations for concepts in industrial design. The key element that we're going to be looking at using Sketchbook Pro or an analog technique is how to create multiples across uh, a space in order to uh, build a design. So we can start with a basic building block. In this case, we're just using a series of straight lines to form a square. And then we can bisect the diagonals to find the midpoint, then project from that midpoint through the midpoint of the adjacent side in order to create a multiple of that element. So in this particular case, we're working on a side-on view or orthographic view to illustrate how that can be done square on. But the process works exactly the same for perspective. So in this particular case, I'm forming a rectangle that forms the side of a design element. I then bisected the diagonals, found the midpoint where it projects through the side, run a vertice from the bottom corner to the top corner, and then from there we can create multiples by simply repeating the process over and over. So you can see those diagonal lines there work for both the orthographic view and the perspective view. Now how can that process be applied to a design sketch? Well we'll just move that element to one side on our canvas and we'll turn on the same grid again. So we've copied that layer across. We'll reduce its opacity so we've some done some basic construction lines on the page to just mass out a design form. Let's say it's the base of a sofa and we can use that underlying structure as a guide to provide the midpoints for the design and we can lay that foundation out down. The important thing in th at this stage is to remember that we have a series of different line types on the page. Our construction lines are really soft and nuanced whether we're doing them digitally or whether we're doing them as an analog sketch. Try and keep your construction lines part of the sketch but don't let them over dominate the image. After that we've got the design lines which form the body of whatever it is that we're trying to uh, convey, so in this case the base of a sofa. And once we have those down we can very quickly establish where a light source is coming from, so in this particular case the upper left hand side, and we can determine the lit face, the front face and the return face of the design. And by articulating those tonally on the page or digitally on the canvas we can get a three-dimensional effect very easily on the page. The main thing is just think logically about the layout of the shaded surfaces such that we have a lit tone, which would be the lightest tone on the page, a mid tone, which is the front face of the design, and a shaded tone, which is on the return or shaded face of the design. The last element we need to think of is just a small ground shadow to tie the page, the uh, the object down to a ground plane. So there we have it there. And bear in mind these concept sketches are not meant to be polished, it's about speed of production in order to test the design ideas. Now in this particular case it's the very simplest of designs but in, in terms of illustrating the process we can understand that it's a fairly basic theory and then we can apply that progressively to more and more complicated shapes as we get progressively more complicated, uh, co uh, confident. So you can see how from a very very simple structure, a rectangular prism drawn roughly in perspective, we can then build the basis of our design ideas. Just throwing a, down a little bit of texture now. Now this could be done if we're working in analog with a little bit of pastel. In this particular case we're just using a textured brush in Sketchbook Pro. We've changed the opacity setting such that it's just a soft effect on the page. And now we're just going to put that design onto a mid-ground paper such that we get uh, some tonal effect on this, the surface, a little bit of colour to add interest to the presentation. But the same basic principles, whether we're working with something simple or something complicated, remains the same. It's uh, build a form as a series of additive and subtractive forms using that uh, geometric process of getting multiples of the object by bisecting the diagonals, then projecting through the midpoint to get the midpoints, 
and then building that up as an additive or, or subtractive form by chopping into those shapes progressively. And then when you get to the rendering stage, simply identify the lit surfaces, the mid-tone surfaces and the shaded surfaces of the object and render them accordingly. Now admittedly that will get more progressively more complicated over, s over time as you uh, attempt more and more complex design ideas, but the basic principles, the, the building blocks, remain the same. So in this case we're just showing, throwing a little bit of reflection into the ground surface for a little bit of interest. And you can see in the space of just a couple of minutes, with no major effort involved, we've got some sense of a design sketch which could be a concept for a seating. Okay, I hope that helps.